So in the top nav bar, this is where our concentration will be, will start from. So here you can see cost management. I hope everybody is seeing it. When I click on cost management, this is what is displayed. Let me do it again. So when I click on cost management, this is what displayed. You have activities, you have question bank, course settings, user links, and badges. So for activities, you have assignments, forums, lessons, quizzes, question bank. This is where you create and organize quiz questions. So you have question bank, question category, import and export. Import and export are for importing questions. Probably you already have questions there in a Microsoft Word document or in a certain format. You can import those questions using this platform or export them using this platform. Then you have course settings. So if you want to edit a course, or maybe you have a way you've done your grading system to be, or you want to edit the completion of a course, everything under course settings is here. So for here, you have user links. This is where you manage your students. When you open this, you realize that it's very self-explanatory. For activities, you can see view all activities in course. When you choose question, when you go for question bank, you see create and organize quiz questions. When you go for budgets, it's award your students. When you go for course settings, it's manage your entire course. When you go for user links, it's manage your students. So at each section, it's very explanatory because there are certain things which are written under it to help you understand what that portion is used for. So I'll close the course management here. The next button. Abigail. Yes. Abigail. Edit. Edit. Abigail. Yes. Please, under the activities, I don't have the assignment. I have only forms. Okay, so that one will be added to you. It will, it will be given. The reason why I have everything is because I've been given admin rights. But as a lecturer, you have the opportunity. You can see um, Bernie or Stephen for that. So will give you that access if it's needed. So that's not okay. a problem. Yes. Thank you. What okay, if you go to course settings, if you go to course settings, mm -hmm. you're saying that we should edit course settings. So yes, that one, this entire portion has to do with your courses. Probably you've created a course, but you want to add something more to it. So this is where you come to. to yes, in the course outline or the course content. Exactly. Anything about your course. That's why I said manage your entire course. It's here. Every single thing. We'll go into it later, but this is like an overview. This gives you an idea of what is where. So under activities, you have all activities in this course. And a question bank, you have question bank, question category, import and export. Badges, those ones are not really necessary. Course settings, everything under the course. And then user links, enrollment codes, everything under here has to do with your managing your students. The number of people who you want to be in your course or who want to, who have to take your course, they'll have to use a code if you want, or if you want to put them in groups for maybe group work. This is where you see all those things. This is an overview. So I'll go into it after okay. this. Yes. So I'll close the tab here by clicking on this cross button. When I close yeah. it, so that's under course management. We've tackled the first one. The second one is enrollment codes. Those ones will be generated. So if you want to create an enrollment code for your students, you this way you click you click let me go back and show you again you click on the second key icon in the top nav bar so this is it enrollment code so when i click on it it will lead me to this page which will help me create the codes so for data structures our algorithm this will be the code and you can check this button, this tab, it's called regenerate codes. If you want it to be regenerated after each time. So I'll go back. Why do I want it to regenerate? So probably you want new codes for that particular course. 
it depends on you. It's, it's a matter of choice. So I'll move on to the third icon, which is like a pencil, if you can see, it's highlighted green. And when I put my cursor on it, it says turn edit on. Edit Edit is for you to um, make changes to anything on the page. So let me click it to show you. Okay, so right now my edit is on. If you realize the edit button was green, but right now it's red. So green is to edit and then the red is to stop it from being edited. I've sent it back right now. So right now it's turn edit on. So if you want to turn it on, you press the green like button, this one. Uh -huh. So if you realize right now I can move things around, you see, it gives you the uh, opportunity to edit anything on the page. Probably you want to move this down or you want to change the position of something. Probably I want stacks to come after cues. So you mean the, you the course, the way we'll be teaching the course as you go along or what? Yes, so right now this is this is what I will I'm demonstrating. So if you want to change any the arrangement of anything displayed on your course, this is what you do. So we have announcements week one and that week one we have this one. I just create them. They are dummy data. It's just a sample to show you how like the platform or the interface looks like after you've entered things inside for your course or your lessons. So this is um, introduction to data structure and algorithms. This one, these ones are assignments, one and two. And this one is probably a quiz. So right now I'll turn this off. And then I'll go and talk about the navigation side, but I'll come back to explain all the activities or the lessons. Okay. So right now I'm going to talk about this left side, this left navigation pane. So this should help you um, get to wherever you, where, where you want to get to very fast. You can see the participants, you can see badges, competency, grades. So when you click on the participants, those are people that are probably enrolled in your course. Right now I have three. And when you see, when you come down, you see number of participants, first name, or surname or then you see first name or surname, username, ID, all these are the information which are collected from the users or your participants, the people who are enrolled in your course. So you have Fred, you have me, you have test. That's like a test account. So at this point, I don't probably if you have questions, you can send them in the chat box so that I could answer them when I'm done. So you mean that what, what you're doing here was the same thing you were doing before? Is that so what you mean? The, the first time I haven't created a participant or haven't added a participant. You see, the people who are enrolled, you see here, there's enroll users. If you enroll someone, their name automatically comes down. And then you have the number of participants increase as you add or as they are enrolled. You get it. Mm. Yes. So back to the left pane button, right? You have the badges, you have competencies, you have grades, you have dashboard. Hello. Hi. In our case, the participants should be the students, right? Yes, please. So um I'm going to um the results or an administrator will have to add. Are you in here? Domain. And um, Peter, I didn't get your question. Is the lecturer himself going to add the students to the platform, or it should be an administrator or the okay. dean to do that? Okay, so in this case, faculty officers are supposed to add the students. The site administrator can do that. 
and the lecturer can also do that given that okay. if uh, let's say we have a late registration and you can generate a code for any students that wasn't added to the course you can do that here as you can see you have various enrollment methods here too so okay. you can you can mm. choose an enrollment method and add the student yourself as the lecturer but if you okay. want work enrollment that is going to be done by the faculty officer so everybody that is being added to the course here becomes a student and the faculty officer determines which role a user will play in the course so that's just that thank you very much you're welcome and please going forward um i think you should type your questions into the chat box so that i can Answer you as the presentation is going on. Thank you. So right now we go to this part, this button. It's like a screw and wheel. And then when you click on it to give you the enrolled users, enrollment methods, easy enrollment group groups permission how to um control the number of people who are enrolled in your course so if there's anything regarding to that place or anything about enrolling users or your students it has to be here so the next thing i'm going to tackle is for budgets you won't really need budgets because those are given to your students um acknowledging them for a certain efforts so if they complete a course or there's a particular um lesson that you've created so a badge is to show that they've completed or achieved a certain milestone i don't know if i'm making sense so that's what badges are for so you could add a new badge or you could manage badges so i'll go next to competencies so competency ratings those ones are more like prerequisites like requirements but you also not need that because anyone who is enrolled in a course meets the requirements for that course automatically by being in that class at that level the next one is grades so this one is the greater um, report so here we don't have anything like enter because it's new so you have grader reports grade history outcomes reports overview report single view and user reports so this is where all your students names will come their first name their same name to be listed in this table and then you'll be able to see the overall average so the next part is the dashboard then the next part is site site home then calendar then private files Private files, as I said, is where you keep the things that you don't want people to see, then your courses. So I'm going back to the data structure scores to get into adding the plans and those things. So right now I'm going to turn on editing. Before you make any changes to your course, you have to turn edit on. Please do not forget it. You can't make any changes to this site or anything like that without checking this or turning it on. Okay. So you, you realize that when I clicked and I turned it on, you see that there are other things that have been activated like this like this i can move resource or i can add an activity or resource i can edit highlight high topic delete topic all these like options are given to you when you turn the edit on so the first thing i will do here is to add an announcement if you have an announcement to give to your students probably there's a test tomorrow or due to certain circumstances, you won't be able to give them a test. You can click the announcement, you turn your edit on, click the announcement, 
and then fill in the details for the announcement. So when you come to the announcement, this is what will be displayed. This one, I already created it yesterday as a dummy. So you could add a new topic. So the subject, maybe um, quiz delayed. And then the message, you could maybe type in what you want them to know. And it's a required field. So an example would be, dear or your quiz has been postponed. Due to unforeseen circumstances. Rescheduling details will be communicated shortly. Thank you. So with this one, after filling in the message body, you go to post to forum. So when you post this, that means you are posting it for everyone to see. Every student who goes, clicks on your course, maybe even if it's not math, maybe it's English. Well, as soon as the person clicks on your course, the first thing you see is the announcement. So your students have to be checking announcements every single day to make sure they don't miss out on an important information from you. So when you come in and then you enter the details for the announcement, quiz delayed, and then the message body, you click on post to forum. So your post was successfully added. You have 30 minutes to edit if you want to make changes. So quiz delayed. So as time goes on, you'll be able to see how everything has progressed. So right now that it has delayed, if I'm to change it and communicate when they'll rewrite, when they'll have to write it, you'll create a new announcement to let them know when it's going to come on. So you can see quiz delayed started by last post and then replies. You see the number of replies to your, your announcements. Maybe those say, oh, thank you, say, thank you for letting us know, say, we'll be waiting for your feedback, say, all those things, you get to see it, say. You can also use this three dots here to see, you can start the discussion, you can pin the discussion. To pin it is to put it in a static position such that it doesn't move. So as an announcement, if I pin this, that means that it's not going to move even if I add other ones. It's going to be at the same position. You see, you see how it has, it has moved up now? The quiz delayed was down. But right now, since I pinned it, it's up. Like that's the most important thing, it's crucial. So since I pinned it, they'll see it immediately when they open the announcement. So right now I'm going back. We are done with announcements. So the next thing I'll do is to add an activity or resource. This is the biggest interest for lectures because this is where you'll be able to add an assignment, a chat, a choice, database, external to feedback, forum, glossary, lesson, quiz, all these things are at your advantage. Anything that you want your students to have or participate or partake in, this is where you go to. So when you turn your edit on, you come to add an activity or resource. You can't add an activity or resource if you not turn your edit on. So when you click on it, this was going to be displayed. So, for example, when you go for assignments, this tells you what you can add. So, the assignment models enables teachers to communicate tasks, collect work, and provide grades and feedback. So, every single option gives you an idea of what it entails. Go to choice, go to database, go to external tools. 
probably there will be a different site that you want to link to this site. Um, there are a lot of learning platforms. Maybe you want your students to get additional information from Coursera or MIT or Harvard X. So you could link that as an external tool for them to learn and go through exercises. How do I change my role for? Okay, so that one, it will have to do with the admin. Um, Frederick and Stephen will solve this issue. A moment process of adding students to courses. Avi, Avi, can I quickly um, speak on that? Okay. Um, currently, um, someone is giving us feedback. Can you please mute mute everybody, please? Mute everybody. Please mute everybody. What's happening? What's happening? Bro, everybody, I only had clean nothing else. Please, can you hear me? Can you hear me? No. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. Your line was breaking. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Please, please I was just, right Okay, I was saying that per university policy, just like the offline, lecturers do not enroll students. So the same thing will be sort of ingrained in the platform that you do not have the right to enroll the student yourself. So when you go and you see your courses, your student would have been enrolled already for you. So whatever you share with them, you can assume that all your students have access to it. When any student is not having access, they have to take it up with the faculty officers or the system administration. That is it. So don't worry yourself with the enrollment. Now, even if you're not seeing that, that's fine. Okay, Afi, please continue. Okay, so back to what I was saying about the activity and resource. So you click on activity or resource, add an activity. I was at the external tools. So I was talking about having an external URL or learning tool that you want your students to go and learn on. So you could add that as, as an external tool. Also, if you want feedback, this is where you come. So you could give them multiple choice, yes or no, or text input. Probably, how do you see this quiz? Was this quiz easy? What would you like to see more in your quizzes? Yeah, so you could give certain, ask for certain feedback from them. And it could be anonymous or you could see the people who actually respond to the feedback. Then you have forum. This is where things will be discussed. It's more like a discussion board. So if you want to create a forum to maybe discuss um, maybe something in agriculture pertaining to your course or something in math, you could create a forum for that so that your students will ask you questions. Maybe say, why is this so and so? Then you post the answer to all of them and make, make them understand why a certain concept maybe exists, for example. Then the next part is glossary. So for glossary, anything that has to do with your course, for maybe data structures and algorithms, you can talk of stacks, heaps, queues, things that are related to software engineering that have a bearing on data structures binary trees, all those things. So those are pertaining to data structures and algorithms. So you could add that in a glossary so that whenever you, your students see a new word that they don't understand, they could go there and then understand it. It could even be an acronym. You can even add images too. So when you click on glossary, you see that to give you a write-up of what to expect when you add them. So this is it. The next one is a lesson. So a lesson activity enables a, a, a teacher to deliver content or practice activities in interesting and flexible ways. So you can create a linear set of content pages or instructional activities that offer a variety of paths or options for the learner. And you can also grade the lessons. Maybe after each lesson, you could create a small test 
where you ask them maybe five questions to test their knowledge on the lesson that you give them to see if they really understand. So this is more like for the lecture, it depends on you. If you want to know if your students understood what you taught or the lessons. Hello, you could make I cannot hear. Test. The next one is a quiz. <clears throat> so this will help you create multi-choice, matching, short answer questions or numerical, depending on you. You can set a time limit for the quiz and it's marked automatically with the exception of essay questions. Then the rest, I don't know if you need it, but they are quite self-explanatory. So this one is, it's a different package. It's for learning objects. That one, it depends on if you want to upload it as a zip file and add, to, add it to the course. It is, it's also like your choice. You can also create a survey. We all know what surveys are for, so you could, if you want to create a survey, you could look at that. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, all right. So right now, I'm going to add an assignment. So I'll click on the assignment tab here. You see it's highlighted. Then I'll click on add. This is an example. So when you come, when you click on add assignment, you'll be required to add in the assignment's name, then a little bit about the description, then additional files, when they should submit the assignment, which is here, and then the submission types, the format that you want. Probably you don't like Word documents, you want it to be PDF. So you enter that here. So I'll start, I'll give an example. So an example of an assignment's name is, um, let me use data structures because that's a course. Data structures. You can't hear me. Please, can everybody hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can hear you. I think it's a network related issue. So. Okay, okay. So for data structures assignments, I've already created two already. So let me make this. Assignment three. Then you can give an a description. So this an assignment, this assignment is from binary trees and their importance. So this is this will give your students an idea of what the um, assignment is about. And then probably additional files if you want them to understand it visually, it depends on you. Then allowing submissions. So this is when you have to create the time frame. Today is 18th. Maybe you want them to submit it on the 20th. So we select 20. So 20th of June, 2020. You can also enable the time. So this is the 24 hour format. So please be careful. So probably by six in the morning or you let me make it 10 in the morning. So by 10 in the morning and then the due date, the day when the submission is due, could be two days after. So the difference here is allow submissions from. So you could create the assignment and just put it there. You could create as many assignments and leave it there. So when you are ready to allow submissions, then you, you have to alter this. So if you want it to, um, for them to start bringing in the assignments on the 20th, then you put 20 here. And then the last day for assignments, the due date is 22nd. And then you could also also um, specify the time, which is maybe 10 a.m. Then you enable. Then this one um, is 
to remind you to grade the, the assignment that they've sent. So this is um, optional. If you want, you could enable it. It depends on you. So if you enable it, it will give you a reminder that, A, hey, on, on the 2nd of July, I have to grade these assignments. So I'm going to leave that enabled. So this submission types, as I already spoke about, so this is the maximum number of uploaded files that your students can send. You don't want them to start spamming your email or your... Uh-huh. So the cutoff, exactly. So the cutoff date, I'm sorry, we skip that. So you can enable it. So this is the day when the students won't be able to send anything. So if I make it on the same 22nd, that means after the 22nd at 10 a.m., you can't send anything again. That's the end. You will have to submit your assignments before 22nd June at 10 a.m. So that will be enabled. If you disable it, it will go gray. If you enable it, it will become white as in the background. And this one to the same thing. If you enable it, this is what will happen. Thank you for that. So as I said, the submission types, file submission or online text, you could make them edit it online or you could make them send it through files, PDF formats. Okay. So um, maximum submission size. So you could specify the size of the documents they are sending. So the limit is 20 MB. That's really huge. And then it's 10 MB, 5 MB, 1 MB, 2 MB. So based on what you are asking for, maybe it's a two-page document. It shouldn't be more than 5, 5 MB. So it depends on you, as I said. Then asserted file types. So you could go for those docs. That's for Microsoft Word. Or you could go for PDF, depending on you. So when you click on it, and, uh -huh. When you click on it, you realize that all file types. So if you want all file types, you can select this, you see. So you can uncheck it to choose other ones. Maybe you want them to send an audio, audio file. Or you could want them to send document file, EPUB. You want them to send, it depends on you. As It's a choice. So this one is .pdf, which is PDF format, Word documents, or general Word documents. Um, these are the other formats, so I'm just going to just scroll through them. So web files, HTML, CSS, the usual. Then video files are also available. So this platform supports all these formats that your students can send the assignments to you. So I'll just close that part. I chose .pdf. So the feedback types is to specify feedback and then submission. And at submission settings, you see it requires students to click the submit button. So I think for that one, it should be yes, because when they are done, you want them to submit to the work. Require that students accept the submission statement. You could also toggle that to yes. That means, um, that, means that there could be a statement saying that clicking on the submit button means that you cannot go back to alter your work and your work will be sent. Are you sure you are ready to proceed with this? So that could be an example of a statement so that they know that they click on the submit button means that their work is going to their lecture and it's not coming back till it's graded. Yes. So attempts reopening, reopened. Probably they submitted an assignment. Don't come and make um, a change because he or she feels that they made a mistake. Yeah, so you could allow that manually, automatically until pass. Then group submission settings. This one is for students who want to submit in groups. If you put them into groups and you want them to do group work, you could toggle this to yes or no to let them know if they can submit in groups or not. They have notifications. Notify graders about submissions. Notify graders about late submissions. Default setting for notify students. Then you have grade. So under grade, this is a lot. So you can 
choose the maximum grade. Let's say the maximum grade for this assignment is 10 marks or 10 points. Then the grading method is simple direct grading. You could go with a marking guide, rubric, but those ones will need more of um, a scheme or a system because a marking guide, you, you need something to go according to. But a simple direct grading, those ones will just be checked on automatically based on the answers that you provide. Then grade category, it's uncategorized. Then the grade to pass, it depends on you. Probably your pass mark is 50. Somebody's pass mark for his students is 45. So based on that, then you put in a grade mark, a grade to pass. So let's say the grade to pass is 50. Let me bring like as an example. So blind marking here, you hide the identity of, the, of yourself to your students. So if you have any problems after this video, understanding what each is used for, you could just click on this question mark in the round blue circle. Then you click on it to give you an idea as to what each of the inputs require. So blind marking, you can see blind marking hides the identity of students from the markers. Blind marking settings will be logged once a submission or grade has been made in relation to this assignment. So if you don't understand anything, you could just click on these small buttons to help you understand what all this is used for. So um, hide grade identity from students and use marking workflow. So these are also options. Then we come down to common module settings. Availability. If the module is available, you show it on the course page. That is the default setting right now. You can also add the ID number or the group mode. You can send it to, it depends. If you have separate groups or visible groups, you could, um, you could select based on the arrangement that you have with your, your students. Then restrict access. If you want a student or a group of students um, to not have access to this assignment, this is where you come to. So you could add a restriction. So activity completion, dates, grade. So require students to complete or not complete another activity. Require students to achieve a specified grade. Allow students to only belong to a specified group. So here, if you want to prevent certain people or certain students from taking this assignment, you choose group. And if you want them to require, to achieve a certain grade, you choose grade. So based on what you need or what you want to do, then you choose one of them. Then we go to tags. Tags, they are not really important. That one is something that is more of a choice. And um, for course competencies, Yeah, for course competencies, so upon activity com completion, you can either do nothing, nothing, show evidence, or send you complete the competency. So, like this click save okay so the grade to pass is true so you see this is very smart because i already specified the grade to be 10. so i can't let it be more than the maximum grade is 10. So the grade to pass can be 50 because it doesn't make sense. If you have an assignment which has a maximum grade you can achieve as 10, then the pass mark can be 50. So this is an error. So I'll make the pass mark five out of 10. So I'll come down here and then save and display. And hopefully it should work. Uh -huh. So this, after pressing the save and display, to give you an overview of everything you've selected, Grading summary, hidden from students, no. So that means the students can see it. Partic participants, one, draft, zero, submitted, zero. 
So everything that you need to see about the assignment that you've put out is here. The due date and time remaining. Right now you have three days, 22 hours to do that assignment. So you could also view all submissions and see the grade. So I'll go back to the data structures and algorithms course. So and I've added I've added an assignment, which you can see here, assignment three. Right now, I'll go and add another activity or resource to just try out and let you see. So the next thing I'll do is a quiz. So I'll add a quiz. <clears throat> So the quiz could be, the quiz name could be quiz on stacks. So the description could be a quiz on everything we've done in week one. And then timing. So I have to, you see these are gray. I have to enable them first before they become white or before I can edit. If you don't enable it, you can't edit the, when you open or close a quiz. So let me open a quiz tomorrow, which is the 19th of June at, let me say 6 a.m. Okay, 6 a.m. is too early. So maybe, let, let me make it 9 a.m. So the quiz starts from 9 a.m. till tomorrow, 19th of June. Um, probably it's a 30 minutes quiz. So let me choose 9.30. You see, so I'm opening the quiz at nine tomorrow and ending it at, sorry. I'm opening it at night tomorrow and ending it at 9.30. Then a the time limit, I can enable it. So that'll be for 30 minutes. So this is another important, um, Parts. When the time expires, what do you want to do? When your student is still um, putting in submissions or answering the questions, what do you want the system to do? So open attempts are submitted automatically. There is grace period when one person attempts, when one attempt can be submitted, but no more questions answered. Attempts must be submitted before the time expires or else they're not counted. So this is quite self-explanatory. That means that if there are attempts made, it's submitted automatically and it's just closed. Or you give them extra time, maybe a minute, a little grace period, where the ones that they've submitted, they can, like the open attempts can be submitted, but they can't go and select other questions and cheat other people. Okay, so you have test course nine in your courses, but it appears you cannot add activity. So I said the first thing you have to do to add an activity is to turn on your editing. It should be a green button here, like on top. So please check your, your top navigation bar. It should have an icon that's like a pencil. And then you, when you send your mouse cursor to it, it should be green. So that's how to solve that one. So for this one, when a time expires, I will give them a grace period and open attempts can be submitted, but they can't answer any more questions. <clears throat> so there is submission grace period, maybe one day. So we come to grade. Then a grade to pass your quiz. Maybe your quiz is over 100. So the grade to pass is 50, 50 over 100. Then attempt allowed. How many times are you all allowing them to um, to write or take that quiz? Maybe just one attempt. If you go for, I think, unlimited, it gives you this option of grading method. So you look at highest grade, average grade, first attempt, last attempt, depending on what you want to see. But I only go for one attempt for the quiz. That means that if you don't pass that, that's the end. Then the layout. So probably on every new page, you want a new question. Or on every page, you want two questions, three questions, four questions, so that you could add more questions to the pages. Maybe one page could have 
20 questions depending on you but if you want it if it's a short quiz you can make every question on a new page that means one question per page you can edit the announcement if you can edit the announcement that means that yes you can add a topic and edit it too yes so you see that there's add activity or resource. So you could go and click that one and select it and add it. If, if you've been able to edit announcements, you can add that. So the next thing I will look at is question behavior. So you could shuffle within questions so that if maybe Kojo got number one to be stacks R, Ama will get um, number one to be cues are they won't get the same number of questions they don't get the same arrangement or order in which the questions are presented it to be shuffled abigail yeah under the layout mm -hmm. under the layout you have show more oh, okay so right. navigation method free or sequential So this one is basically helping you, it gives you an idea of how the questions are going to be displayed. That's it. So you could either go for free or sequential. Let me let me Actually. quickly comment on that. Mm -hmm. The questions are going to flow, question one, question two. Do you want them to be able to scroll all throughout or one comes, the answer, they submit the next one comes in that order. Uh -huh. That is what that is. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So for question behavior, show more. Okay, that's it. So review options. Okay, so for this one, immediately after the attempt, you could review the options. You could give them the opportunity to see what they chose whether I was correct, there are marks, specific feedback. You could add all those things to the quiz. Probably if question one, they got it wrong, they could get the opportunity of seeing feedback to why they chose that answer and what answer, answer it should have been. Sorry. So this is for the review options. Then the next one is, Later, while the quiz is still open, you can also check the attempt, whether correct, mark, specific feedback, all these options. After the quiz is closed, you could also see all these things. So based on you and your choice, you could toggle them on or off based on what you want your students to see. That just depends on you. Then the next part is appearance. You want to show the user's picture, in the decimal places of the grades, I think the standard is two decimal places, two DP. So the same thing, this one enables you to choose the same thing for overall grades. You, so you, you can't hear me. You can't hear me. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Oh. Fred, can you hear me? Hello. Frederick. Steven. Steven. Please, can anyone hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, you. so, and um, please let me tell him to check his connection because when your line is interrupted, you will not be able to hear the sound, but you could see the visual. So, Back to what I was saying about the decimal places for the grades. So you could choose maybe if you want the overall grade, maybe 50 over 100. If you want it to come as 50.0, you choose one decimal place. 50.00, two decimal places. So th that one, it, it depends on you. Then the next one is show blocks during quiz attempts. No. If you want to block somebody from um like choosing a, a specific answer yes then to show that there are normal blocks to, to be shown during the quiz attempts 
Okay, then there are extra restrictions on attempts. Attempts, as in if they want to choose a specific answer, it could require them to have a password. Or, and then you enter the text, maybe, please enter your password or something. So if you want them to type in a password before answering, you can let them like type in their password before they'll be able to answer. It's just an extra restriction on their attempt. Let me go to show more. Okay, so there's nothing on the show more. So overall feedback. So after the quiz, do you want to tell your students something? Maybe um thank you for taking this quiz. Let me know how it went or something. It depends on you what you want to tell your students. So this is where you come to score overall feedback. So the grade boundary is 100 percent And this is where you type in your feedback. And then you have the grade boundary again, and then feedback. So for hundred percent, probably you say you have done so well. This is just an example. And then maybe for grade boundary for maybe 50, you say put in more effort. You can make it or something like that. These are just examples, please. So for grade boundary for zero, for grade boundary for zero, you can add another feedback. Maybe if somebody got zero in your test, you can let them have like that extra grade or that extra feedback. So let's say for zero, somebody got zero in your test. Please, would the feedback not have any influence on the students? Aha, uh -huh. so that's the thing. So based on you as a lecturer, right? So the feedback that you give should be constructive in a sense that it should motivate your students to do well in their quizzes because this platform will give the opportunity to see how your students are faring like on your quizzes, on your assignments, during your lessons. So what you tell them or what you um, put back as feedback should kind of motivate their spirit if they've got, if they're at a low grade boundary, let's say zero or 50. Because the people who got 100, they're not too different from the people who got 50. So the different, you have to construct different messages, right? So the different grade boundaries. So I, I hope I'm, I'm, I'm answering okay. your question. Yes. So for grade, for grade boundary zero, you could tell them um, probably this is very, this is not good, but I believe in you. Please put in effort next time. Like something like that. So that depends on you. So after the grade boundary, we have common model settings. This is similar to, please I'm coming, let me see the questions. Okay. So common module settings, availability, show on course page. If you want the, this to be shown on the course page, you can show it there. If you want to hide it from your students too, you can hide it. Then the ID number, you can specify one. Then groups. If you want it to be in a separate group or visible group, you can choose any of the options. Uh -huh. Here too, similar to the assignment, you can restrict access. If you don't want somebody to get access to this quiz or there's a student who has been absent from all your online webinars or classes, you could restrict them from writing the quiz since they've not been partaking in it in your online sessions, it depends on you. Then activity completion. So this is where you can track the students that have completed it. So students can manually track, manually mark their activity as completed. Share activity as complete when conditions are met. So based on what you want to do, you will select each, any of the options. If like you cannot indicate activity completion, but I think it's necessary so that they know their progress. Then expect completed on. So if you enable it, this is when you expect it to be done. So let's say on the 19th of June at maybe tomorrow at midday. So at 12 exactly, it should have been done. The tags, you could enter any tag that you want. Um, probably data structures, computer science, things that relate to the course. 
them for competencies. <clears throat> There's no selection for that one. If like you can type in one, if you come to the um the blue button with the question mark inside it to tell you course competencies are linked linked to these activities. So those are more of requirements, which I already said, but they are not really needed because everybody who sees this or is in this course is required or has the prerequisites to write this quiz. Then upon activity completion, you could do nothing, attach evidence, send for review, complete the competency. Exactly. Then you could save and display. Exactly. So again, because I specified the grade, so whenever you specify a grade, please make sure that you check that the grade to pass is lower than that. Since the grade, the maximum possible grade is 10. I can't specify 50, so I'll go for five. So the, the grade to pass this quiz is five over 10. If you get less than five, please, that means that the person hasn't passed. So I'll come down again and then I'll choose save and display. <clears throat> Feedback grade. Um, I'm coming. So based on the maximum possible grade, then you can um, edit the boundaries. The prompts that gave me was the boundary I set was 50, but the maximum possible grade was 10. So based on the number of marks that your students are supposed to get, if it's for maybe final, um, IA or anything, the maximum possible grade should be the highest grade. Then the boundaries should be lower than that. So for here, this quiz will not be available until Friday 19th at 9 a.m. It will close on time limit, 30 minutes. So you're starting to see all this with the title, a quiz on stacks, a quiz on everything we have done in week one. So you could go to edit quiz. <clears throat> so for here, you can edit the heading if you want, but we would like to add. So for here, this is a very important part, please. Uh -huh. Also, you can, change the maximum grade. Maybe you want the maximum grade now to be 20 because you realize that you've added extra questions. You can change it here to 20. So for here, you can also turn on the shuffle to change the questions. Then you add. This is very important because this lets you know how you add your questions. Are you adding a new question, adding from question bank, or just adding a random question? If you remember, when I scrolled on top here, I went to cost management. I showed you this before, and I showed you question bank. Question bank is like a repo, a repository for questions that you've imported. So let me close this and come down here. So when I click on add, and I go to add new question, you see all these options, multiple choice, true or false, matching. Short answer, numerical, essay, calculated, calculated multi-choice, calculated simple, drag and drop into text, drag and drop markers, and so on. So there are lots. Based on the questions that you want your students to answer, you select the appropriate one, and then you click on add. Let me choose multi-choice, multiple choice, MCQs, and add. Okay, so this is what will come, adding a multiple choice question. So question name. Let me say stacks. And then <clears throat> the question text. What is the operation of stacks? So that's a question text. And then the default mark. 
when you click this, it will let you know like um the highest number that the person will get. If you answer this question, that means you are getting one mark. In general feedback. If you want to give feedback to your students on this question, please you can enter it here. Then ID number is also optional. One answer only because this is a multiple choice question. Then number the choices, maybe A, B, C, capital A, B, C. This is just like numerical. If you want to I, 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 depending on what you want, I would go for A, B, and C. <clears throat> so the answer that you give, you could go with FIFO. To import the questions, go to, okay, yes. So I'll come to that after. So this one is manually adding the questions one by one, which is stressful. That's why we have the question bank. But if you think probably you have enough time to maybe enter the questions one by one, that one you could go through this method where you have to enter. Okay, so right now we are the answers. Then the grade specified for this, it ranges from 900 to like negative. So I'll go for none. And then if you want to give feedback on that answer, maybe the people that chose this, if it's the right answer, you see maybe great to work. Maybe if it's choice two, which is, let's say, LIFO, first, last in, first out. If it's the wrong answer, the feedback would be, oh, try again. Something like that. Or the third choice would be, I don't know, something else. So you could give as many choices as you want. And when you are done, you come back to combine feedback for like the general question. So you can see for any correct response, your answer is correct. For partially correct response, your answer is partially correct. Then for any incorrect response, maybe you, you could say your answer is incorrect, but try again, something like that. <clears throat> this, this for multiple tries. So here you can give a penalty for each incorrect try. So if they choose a wrong answer, you could penalize them. Then you give them a hint. So hint one, you can add maybe, remember how stacks are or the operation on stacks or queues or something, depending on the course they are teaching. Then you have hint two. The second time that they don't get this correct, you could send a second hint which would redirect them to the right answer or give them an understanding, a deeper understanding so that they can choose the right thing. <clears throat> and as they are doing this, they are being penalized for each incorrect try. So you could also add another hint, but I don't think it should be necessary. After two tries, if the person didn't get it, maybe the person didn't really read it. Then you could add tags which relates to your course as well. Then save changes and continue editing. <clears throat> so one of the possible grades should be 100. I didn't see this. Okay, so save changes and continue editing. So this is it. So I can preview the question or I can just save changes. Let me go to preview so that you have an idea of how the question looks like. So please, are you seeing this? Question one, not answered yet, marked out of one. What's the operation of start? Select one, FIFO, LIFO. So this, you click preview to give you an idea of how it to look like in a browser. Exactly. So please, I'm closing this. And then save changes. <clears throat> okay. So if you realize when it has been added, stacks, what's the operation of stacks? So that's the first question. The second way to add a question is from the question bank. So you click on question bank.
Okay, so for question bank, the way to add it is by clicking on the course management, as I already said, the top here. When you click on question bank, it gives you the opportunity to import questions. So if you realize this is where the questions are, but if I want to import questions from my laptop, I click on this course management and I come to import. Okay. So this gives me an idea. If you realize whenever you want to see which directory or um, I want to use a better word. If you want to see where exactly you are, you can look at the progress of this by see dashboard, you went to courses, you went to faculty of science, you went to department of IT, the MDIT, question bank, and then import. So this tells you exactly where you are. So you specify the file format. As I said, Moodle, this platform allows you to choose the format that you want to import the questions from the file. So there's an AK format, Moodle XML format, missing word format, all these types. <clears throat> so you could select one. Let's go for AK. And then you have general. So import category, that one is by default because this is the course, the course name, MDIT. Then match grade, error if grade is not listed. Then you stop on error. So we come down to here, where it's import questions from file. Here you click on this button, choose a file. The maximum size for new files is 20 MB as we specified. So you click here, which you open this, right? Upload a file. Then you choose, choose you click on choose file to choose a file from your laptop. Then you click on this, you realize that it's opened your your downloads that's default for me but even if it hasn't opened your downloads you should navigate to where exactly your you keep your things or where your questions are so i'll go to downloads and i'll go and look for quiz sample akin format then i'll select it i'll click on it and then open <clears throat> Okay, so the format of the file, that one will be taken care of by the course administrator. So that one isn't much of your problem. What should be your problem is adding the questions to the question bank to make things easy for you so that you don't have to manually enter the questions one by one. That is work. If you have 100 questions to add to a question bank, I don't think it would be very like convenient to now type it in one by one. So after I've chosen the file, which is aching format sample.txt. And my name is already entered because that's this is my account. I upload this file. This is taking a while. Okay, so yesterday when I tried using this, it takes a while compared to the drag and drop uh, drag and drop method. So I could open my downloads using the shortcuts, the Windows key and E, and then open downloads. And then look for the Akins format, quiz sample. So here it is, this one. And I can simply just drag and drop it to you. You see, this one is like quite simple because it was very, very fast compared to the other one where we needed to like choose a file from my PC. Then you click on import.
Okay, so when you click on import, you realize that it gives you feedback. Passing questions from input file. Importing five questions from file. The first question, which of the following is or are the levels of implementation of data structure? So we imported five questions and this is the, this how or what was displayed or this work we got. Then go to continue. <clears throat> So for now, you the category is already default, it's selected. You can apply tag filters. I don't think they'll be necessary, but if you want to maybe give more clarity on what exactly you are importing, you can add that. You can also create a new question, show old questions, show questions from subcategories. That's what's selected. So the question actions created by username I mean, last modified by all these things are available. So if you realize this one was on stacks, the one I created before I imported the questions. If you want, you could edit the question. Maybe you've imported a question, but you realize that certain characters are not recognizable, like this question mark. That means that there was something there that's right now when I imported, because of the change of format, it comes as that symbol. So you could edit the question. When you edit the question, when you click on that, you see that you could just get rid of the question marks and type in what is not the component of maybe a data structure and do the same thing for the question text too. Then you scroll down and then you click on save changes. <clears throat> okay, so when you click on save changes, it will bring you back here. You realize that it's highlighted green because we've edited and we changed it. You can do that for the other ones which have the symbols. So right now, I'll go back to courses. <clears throat> So if you realize, I use a very long approach of going to using these these um, these tabs. They help me switch through um, which page I want to see. If I want to go to the main dashboard, I, I just click on the dashboard or courses or faculty of science or the department. And right now I'm at the department side, so this is what I'm seeing. So when I click on data structures, it sends me to data structures. And when I click on SE, it sends me to SE. So my editing is still on, if you realized. So I can still edit. The quiz on stacks is here. The assignment I created is here and the announcement I created is also here. So we're going to create another activity again. So this time we'll go for the lesson. Okay, so when you're adding a new lesson, the name you could give it is um, you could go for introduction to binary trees. <clears throat> So this is, this is just a short description I'm giving for the lesson which will be added to the course. So 
you could check this if you want them to see the description on the course page. Perhaps when you create this lesson, you want them to have an idea of what they are going to go through in the course. So when I check this, that means that they'll see this description there. Then we go to appearance. <clears throat> you can let them see their progress with the progress bar. Let me toggle it and turn it on. Then you have a display menu. I think I'll leave that as no. So for appearance, right? I could have um, a PDF or a PowerPoint that has um, binary trees as its title, or that's on binary trees. So I can use my sniping tool to cut and come and paste the picture here to make them have an idea of how it's going to look like or to just beautify it. Um, Steven, do you think I should do a demo of that or it's not necessary? Steven. Okay, so I think I'll skip that for now. So the next thing I'll do, I'll go through is the display grade to minimum grade to display menu, then slideshow, maximum number of answers, use default feedback. This is all pertaining to the lesson. Maybe if you create a question and answer, if you create a question and answer, um, one minute, please. Okay. So what I wanted to do with the appearance, it may take time, but it will give your um your course a very nice feel when they come to your course page and then they go to your um the lessons for each lesson, maybe introduction to data to data structures or binary trees, they could see a visual representation of that. It could be in the form of a picture. That's why you drag and you drop the elements. And I wanted to demonstrate that, but that might that may take time. So I'll just go on to the next one. So maximum number of answers to the questions that you ask in a lesson and default feedback. This is very important. Link to next activity. And please do not forget, like forget this. The lessons need to be linked from one to another. You see in certain books, like hard copy books, when you buy them, you see that you have introduction to maybe data structures. Then under lesson one, you have introduction to um, stacks, heaps, and queues as an example. Lesson two will be on binary trees, but the lesson one and lesson two are linked. I hope I'm making sense. So if you want to link it to the next activity, so maybe lesson data structures and algorithms. <clears throat> okay, so I'll just continue. So the, the next activity after this will be, after the binary trees will be the lesson to data structures and algorithms, which is actually wrong because this lesson comes before this lesson. Please, am I, am I, am I am making sense? Hello? I, I just hope I'm making sense of the linking of the activities. Your activities need to be linked when it comes to lessons. Uh, this thing should come before the, the sequence yes. of the lecture is what you are talking of. Yes, so, so, it, yeah, so introduction should come first. Come before the start. Exactly. So before you even decide to create a lesson or a course, you have to sit down and then plan, how am I going to deliver this course? Which lessons come before which lessons? So that it will be in a very um, um, system, like it, it should be in a system, in, in a systematic form. You see, things follow. So if you have introduction to data structures, the next lesson should be um, introduction to maybe stacks and heaps and queues. 
the next blessing, the blessing can be binary trees. The so based on what you want to link your next activity to, then you link it. Okay, thank you. So um, I, the reason I'm stressing on it is if you don't link the activities, it will become messed up. And it's going to create confusion for you because once one student will end up learning stacks and saying that he did see that the next thing to learn was binary trees. And you ignore binary trees and tell you that it wasn't linked. He didn't see it, so he couldn't complete it. So please don't forget to link the next activities. It's very crucial, please. The next one is availability. <clears throat> this lesson I are creating, is it going to be like there forever? You want it to be just be available for some time. That means that your students can read or learn this lesson from maybe tomorrow, let's say 19th of June. Ongoing. Or you want to set a limit. So from 19th June, which is tomorrow till um, let me see. 25th, when they have a quiz. You see, so depending on what you want to do, you can set the availability of your lessons and you can toggle them on and off to make them enabled or unable. You can also set a time limit. So that also depends on you. <clears throat> we come down to flow control. Do you want to allow a student review? Yes or no? <laughs> Provide options to try um, a question again after the lesson. Yes or no? Maximum number of attempts. As I already said, after each lesson, you could ask like five questions to really test the knowledge of your students to see if they really understood what you taught through your lessons. So based on that, you can toggle the, the flow controls to see the understanding. So the maximum number of attempts after each lesson should be just one because they just completed it. A lesson is a small like part of the course, so they should be able to grasp it. So I'll go to the show more. <clears throat> so action after correct answer should be not comes as a result of the linkage. Okay. It comes as a result of the linkage. And the number of pages to show, that one too also depends on you. So you could show one page at a time, two, it depends on you. Then the grade, we've come to the grading side again. So after the lessons, how many points do you want your students to have? What's the maximum grade? Maybe the five questions, you could do it over 100. That means each question is 20 marks. <clears throat> then you can specify the grade to pass. Maybe if you set five questions and it's over 100, the pass mark could be 50. Hey, that's not possible because it's five questions. So the pass mark could be 60. That means they've answered three questions. Please, I hope you're understanding. Then you could make them practice the lesson or allow retakes. If they didn't pass, they can retake it. So you can turn this on or off. <clears throat> so now we come to common module settings. So for here, availability, you can show it on the course page. Specify an ID number and add groups or restrictions. The same thing for the other activities. It's, it's the same thing, access restrictions. If you don't want certain students to take this lesson because they haven't completed another one or they didn't do on that one, you can restrict them from taking this one and make them take the other one before they take this one. It depends on you. <clears throat> then we have activity completions. Students can manually mark the activity as completed. So when they are done reading that, they just check it as a checkbox that, oh, I finished this lesson. So I'm moving on to the next one. You could also set the date where that activity or lesson should be completed. So if I create this lesson today, maybe by next week it should be done. So maybe on the 25th, they should be done reading it because it is a very short lesson. So you can enable it or disable it. Then you can add tags. That one will also give meaning to your course or should be around what your course is about. Then competencies. <clears throat> you could select the requirements. Those 
or I, I've said this about four times already. Those are the requirements. And upon activity completion, you could just do nothing, attach evidence that, oh, you've completed, send review, complete the competency. So I'll go for do nothing. Because when you finish a, a lesson, you have to move on to the next lesson. There's nothing else that you have to do. So I'll choose save and return to course. So as you could see, because you chose the, thank you. As, because you chose the display, the description, you can see that in this part, you, you see in this, in this is a short lesson on binary trees and the methods of traversal. So right now we've created announcements, we've created assignment three, we've created a quiz, and we've created a lesson. <clears throat> So this is what I was talking about when I was linking the lessons, right? So when you have data structures and algorithms, you have another one to here, introduction to binary trees. Let me go and edit it so that you understand the linking well, because as I already said, it's very important for you to link your lessons. If you don't link your lessons, it makes your whole course like this organized. You want it to follow a procedure or you want them to approach your course in a certain way to enhance their understanding. So before you do this, you have to sit and get a piece of paper and really map out how you want your content to flow, how you want your course to appear or look like. So I'll go to edit and edit settings so that I could go and link this to the other one, the binary trees. So appearance, show more. Okay. So we can see link to next activity. I will and choose introduction to binary trees, you see, because this introduction, this lesson, it comes before this binary tree. So after this lesson, the next one that my students should take is a binary trees. <clears throat> So save and display. Okay, so for this one, the reason why these ones are on top is because I just created them new and I created them on top of these ones. So since I'm still in edit mode, I can move them. So for this one, it could be under this. So this one is the introduction to data structures. Then this is their first assignment. And after that, then it's binary trees. But even though it looks like this, right, they are still linked because after data structures, it will automatically prompt them to go and do the binary trees. And then they have their second assignment. Then they have their quiz. If you realize also, once that we created the third assignment and then the stacks. So you could arrange them also. I'm coming one minute. The third assignment will go down. Okay, so after assignment two, that's assignment three. Then I'll go for the, the quiz on stacks. So that one is here. Okay, so the quiz on stacks will come before the general data science, data structure quiz, sorry. But please, for announcements, they always should be on top. That's the most, like one of the most important parts of this platform. If your students don't get announcements, then they'll never be abreast with what's going on with the course. So anything I need to say to them or to discuss, please, announcement should always be on top so we don't change the position. So right now I'm going to turn off editing so that you see how everything looks like. Okay, so for stacks, I think I'll bring this down because there's a plane for stacks here. And if like you can edit the names to the of the topics. So 
I can make an intro to stacks. I can also give a summary based on the mode of operation, how to get elements from stacks, how to add elements, push and pop, all those things. So these are things pertaining to stacks. And then I'll just, I can also restrict access or I can just save changes. So you realize it has been changed to interest to stacks. And all this is under week one. So if you want, maybe, if you realize that at the end of the week, your students are not able to meet the target of finishing the first lesson, it's either you have to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation or see if you move the other things to other weeks. So maybe week two could be on queues. Week three could be on stacks. So it depends on the flow of your content delivery. And that entirely depends on you and how you want to run your course. So at this point, I think I have gone through most of the important parts. I want to check the activity to see if there's anything very important that I've not gone through. The glossary is more like a, an online dictionary to add words that your students might find new to. So you could add a new word and give them meaning and then you add it just in case they need reference. In certain terms, are complex. Certain acronyms are hard to remember, so you could also add that one in there for quick reference. And you also you could also add a feedback and these other options or activities, as I said. So right now it's twelve forty-five, and I would want questions. So if you have any questions, 